Welcome back to the channel guys. This is the native Android app for MeshCore. And this is gonna ruffle some feathers. So the main man, Liam Cottle, has come up trumps again with this amazing app for MeshCore. It's absolutely awesome, guys. I can't wait to show you. I'm just gonna dive straight in and show you what it's all about. So this is the MeshCore Android app then, guys, and I've got it paired up with a SenseCap T1000E um, device here, which is really awesome. Credit card size, fits in your pocket. Pretty good internal antenna, long-lasting battery, and a waterproof case. Really awesome bit of kit, and it works really well with MeshCore. So the app itself then is connected to this node by Bluetooth, and you can see here, I'm already connected, but I'll show you how you would actually connect it. So you just hit the connect button, and basically you just get a list here of, of all the nodes that you want to obviously that you can connect to. Um, in this case, we've just got one here, so we'll just hit that, and it will just connect up to this device. And then you'll see obviously all the contacts that are on this device um, stored on there. So it will also um, pull in messages and stuff that you've kind of received if you're not connected to the app. And the app, like you know, other systems will um, reconnect to your device if it sort of goes out of range and all that sort of stuff. So if we go into the channels menu, you've got a public channel, which is a kind of usual throwaway chat, which just yeah, anyone can kind of join in on. Um, and that is kind of pre-configured to sort of what we've been using um, key-wise for the UK. But this might change in the future, um, the ability to configure these channels. So that's that. And then in the contacts menu, you've got secure direct messaging. So this is where MeshCore really shines, is its ability to be able to do reliable messaging, multi-hop. It has paths, and this is something really exciting I'm gonna show you in a minute, because look at this menu here. We've got a set path menu. What does that mean if you're not familiar with this? Normally, devices will just find their own paths to the node, to your other node. So if you've got a T-deck in the area or something like that, it will know that this one's only zero hops away. But what if this device is further away and it needs to route through another repeater to actually reach this one? Well, that is basically all done automatically with MeshCore, but now you have the ability to actually set your paths manually, which is just absolutely mind blown and you can also now visually see the paths that MeshCore has chosen automatically for example if we go into this one here and then go to set path we'll see the repeaters that it's actually used to reach that station and that that station there in particular is about you know seven or eight kilometers away routing through three different repeaters i mean this is just next level stuff guys really is so in the contacts list here, it shows you all the other information you need, how many hops away, um, inf info about the node, what type it is. You know, you've got repeaters here and you've got kind of end nodes as well. Um, and then your public keys and the last heard number of hops. You can search nodes in here as well. So you can find nodes that you want to actually contact in that list. You can hit this button at the top and that will advertise your node to the network or locally. If you hold it down, it will do a flood advert across the entire mesh not entirely recommended to do that all the time because you know it takes up traffic and airtime but you can do that should you need to do that you have settings in here which is bound to expand as time goes on more settings will be available and then you can also import contacts as well using the sort of standard mesh core system of importing uh, contacts and the chat window is modern slick it just works exactly how you'd expect a modern chat app to work and you get proper delivery reports, so you always know if the other side has, has actually received the message. And these are proper delivery reports. They're not ones that kind of appear now and again. You don't really know if the other side has got your message. You can really rely on these reports. So to get this app, then you can head over to the MeshCore official website, click on the apps from the menu, and you'll see it right at the top there. Um, you can also download this directly from Liam. He'll probably have bleeding edge builds on um, his own site, and I'll leave the links below in the description for that. You can use this app with all the usual nodes, you just head to the web flasher and you can basically choose your node that you want to actually flash. All you've got to do is make sure you install the BLE companion radio firmware on whatever device you want to use, like in this case, the T1000E, which is listed down there, and then you're good to go. So the app is Android only at the moment. The good news is this app is gonna be used as the basis for the iOS version, which is in the pipeline now. For now, if you've got an Apple device, you can actually use the MeshCore client with the BlueFi app on the Apple Play Store. So you can actually use this on an Apple iPhone right now. But for me, the most exciting thing today is to be able to manually define paths on a mesh network like this. It's never been seen before, it's never been done before, and this is just gonna, again, change the 
game completely. I can't believe Liam has kind of pulled this off so quick. It's absolutely amazing work. Also, we can't forget Scott because a lot of the underlying code that's made this possible has kind of been done um, by Scott there. So absolutely brilliant team effort. The next video segment is going to be a demo all about the pathing. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, let's do some testing with this then. Super exciting. Um, so this node here, 100 acre, this is actually one that's actually at my parents' house, which is about seven kilometers away. So I think we have got a path on this. Let's just do a test message here and see. And we can see, yeah, look, it's delivered straight away. So that's pretty quick. Um, hit go on there. That's delivered. So let's just check the path on that. So the path on that is basically 1F, 10 and 6D. So that is, I've been playing around with this, so I know the path. So 1F is my, my home repeater. 10 is Royden. So that's about 10 kilometers away. And then 6D is the, that's the repeater that's in my parents' loft. So that's all good. So we can basically go out of there. Let's see, see who else we can contact on here as well. Um, that'll probably be online. I think uh, Royden should be as well. And we should be able to get Royden because obviously he is part of that part of that path anyway. Um, so we're going to go test for YouTube. Hit go on that. And that's delivered pretty quick. Um, <laughs> are you there, mate? Um, let's see. Let's see if that... So that's obviously gone through as well. So if we look at his path, set path here, we can see 1F and 10, so that's my repeater and his repeater. So we are pretty much direct. So that's um, that's as expected. So obviously we know Royden's node is on at the moment because we can contact it. He's probably busy doing something at the moment, so that's probably why he's not replying. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try something else. So I'm going to reset the path here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new path. So let's set the path here. And we can use this little feature here to select the repeater we want to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and use my G2 repeater, which is another one, um, on the other side of the house here, and see if I can get direct to him via that one. So his repeater is this one, this T114 there. And then from here, we can just hit the tick. So that's added both repeaters in that chain there, and we can do a tick on that and, and see. So this will be an interesting one. Let me see if we can, you can see that's just updated to two hops there. So let's see if I can hit him direct um, via this other repeater I've got um, on the other side of the house here. Because I've always wondered this, can we actually do that? Um, so we'll try that direct. And it does, it goes through. It goes through straight away from there, which is really interesting because I mean, I wouldn't have known that before because it's just luck of the draw, which repeater it chooses. Um, but that's quite interesting. I can actually do a two-way con with him just using this, this um, Omni. And this omnidirectional antenna on this repeater is actually a lot lower than the Yagi that I was using before. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to put manually set path as a test. And then just fling that out there. And that's gets delivered straight away. So I've got two ways of reaching um, Royden, which is going to give me another route into another area as well. So that's good. So another contact here, which I've got, um, is Colin. And he's quite tricky. You can see all these reds here. And he's kind of in a quite a built up area. Let's clear that path and basically just try and do an automatic path just by doing the usual way. Path test and see if we can get anywhere with that. So that's failed. So now, what I'm going to try and do, because I know I can get Royden pretty well, so I'm going to type in here, I'm going to say I want to go from my G2 to uh, Royden and then uh, Nismo repeater. So that should that should do it. And it's done those in order, which is good. So my G2, Royden's repeater, and then um, Nismo's repeater, which is Colin. So now let's try, um, let's try this path test and just see what happens there see if that works took a little while still tricky that one went through there let's see if we can get any sort of com going with him well that's delivering now interesting let's wait for him to come back and see if he comes back 
see the other thing is is there might be some other traffic on the mesh as well which does kind of impact things a little bit um but where are all these people why is everyone not, not replying are they on lunch or something see if we can entice them that's going through pretty much every time now okay so it looks like colin's come back to us three times so as i say this is a bit of a scratchy one this one um i know he's playing around with his antennas and stuff at the moment as well so this is obviously going to be some some sort of interesting stuff happening of course you can always go and you know look at the path here um maybe it might be better if i was to use my uh my yagi so i might just select that one instead so like if i put one f in there and then save that and then we'll see if that makes any difference as well. Let's just try that one and see if we can get, get something to go across. Doesn't look like it's going to happen today. <laughs> anyway, need that McGill up, mate. Royden just come back to us as well. Oh, look, you had to head to a meeting, so no worries, mate. No worries at all. How quick that is. That's quicker than WhatsApp. <laughs> So pretty cool stuff then. It's so cool to be able to just even see the path that your packet takes. I'm sure many of you that have been kind of frustrated with Meshtastic and, and so the other things out there um, actually getting a, a clear idea of where your packets are going. You've got no idea. You've got no hope in knowing this. And the trace route feature didn't work because it just obviously wants to try and include as many nodes as possible and push out the range, which just doesn't work in this kind of topology, especially in the UK where we've got so many kind of hills and little crevices and areas that are really tough to get to so having defined pathing really solves this because you can just say i want it to go from that repeater to that repeater to that repeater done simple as that i mean why hasn't anyone thought of this before so liam has got some interesting new ideas that he's kind of looking at doing at the moment which includes mapping so you'd be able to like draw a lasso around a bunch of um repeaters that you want to route through um you know that sort of graphical interface of being able to just see a bunch of repeaters on a map and just kind of draw a line between them something like that is going to be seriously seriously amazing anyway guys i'm going to wrap this one up now lots of stuff covered in this video hope you've enjoyed it don't forget join the discord like and subscribe for more videos like this and yeah see you on mesh call